in many of my videos I discuss something that I consider one of the main topics, if not the main topic on this channel, and that is how can we generate a 3D model of a building, something we call a digital twin, a model that has every possible detail inside, every screw and every weld seam, and at the same time have a fully parametric model. Now, in many other videos I talk about what a fully parametric model is, and if you follow me there will be repetition. But, in very few words, a fully parametric model means that if you imagine this digital twin of some building, you can change anything at any stage of the design of the object. You can move whole surfaces, change the basic shape, move the basic grid, and once you do that, everything else up until that last screw and that last welding seam will be updated parametrically, because everything is connected through the rules in a single DNA of the building. Now, as much as I love philosophy and theory, there is not so much sense in talking about abstract concepts in the building industry. So, on this journey toward the fully parametric model, let me demonstrate to you what I mean on a small model in Katia. Now, keep in mind that I will only show you a very few first steps, and if you follow me on this journey, you will see how we uh, will build a fully parametric house, up until the shop drawings, CNC files, and bill of quantities. And we will see how any change can result in an entire house adapting to those changes. Now, there are an infinite number of ways to parametrize a 3D model, so let's start with an obvious one. So this is how we're going to do this. This is a small parametric model that uh, misses a lot of stuff, I'll talk about that later, but this is just the first part on the, of the journey. But instead of me now explaining what the first step is and always let you imagine what the next step will be, I will fastly, relatively fastly, go through all of the steps and then I will go backwards to explain what actually happened and how the things are interconnected. So bear with me. What we are doing here is we are starting with a simple grid. So I have this grid in a so-called sketch in Katia in a 2D space. In this 2D space I have this grid that is constrained. What that means is that all these lines are interconnected. Uh, they are parallel, first of all, and then second, they have specific lengths, which means that if I change this length here to uh, 5400, it will move and all others will follow. I will return this to 2400 for now. And you will see later how these changes can affect the whole drawing, the whole model. So I have this basic grid and what my idea was to use that grid to build this layered parametric model, uh, I made a second grid on top of it. So why would I do that? Well, I would do that so that you see here in yellow, you see the original grid. And what I did is made this secondary one with these infinite lines. And those infinite lines are co connected to the original grid with a simple offset value, which means so this a particular line, line is offset from this grid line for 200 millimeters. Let's change it to, one to 1200 just to see, to show to you that it changes. That means that whenever I change this uh, line in the original grid, this one will follow it and always remain 200 from it. That's the case with all other lines. Now, why did I do that? In our example, I have uh, some uh, walls. Let me blend them in. Those are some specific walls that find themselves exactly on, the, on that secondary grid, which means for some reason that's not important right now, these walls here will not be exactly on the grid lines, they will be on this secondary grid, uh, grid structure that is slightly shifted from the original grid. So uh, that's a good example to see how the, we can do this layered parametrics. And in uh, my case, I have a little, little CLT wooden panel building, which means that all these lines represent a single CLT panel. Now, what I could have done, and I skipped this step, but it's not so relevant right now, I could have made full lines here and then define the division itself to be parametric, but I didn't. I just simply uh, created these lines and I constrained them with some lengths, but again, you will see that when we go uh, backwards. Uh, we will get out of this sketch and I will show you that there is another uh, sketch on top of it, it's internal walls. So here we see, we see some uh, external walls and some internal walls of this little CLT house 
of which you will see only ground level and later we'll we expand to generate the whole house. So what is so special about it? Well, we want to use these lines as input lines to generate some CLT panels. So what we need is a, a important word is a template. So we need a, some kind of a template for a CLT panel. And here there are some templates that I created. So let's see how this CLT panel vertical template looks like. So I literally went and drew some inputs. In our case, there is an input line here that will enter into the construction of our panel. And there are some top plane, you see, and bottom plane. They're there just to cut the panel on the top and cut it on the bottom. So what I did, this here is uh, made this template by literally modeling it. And you, as you can see in Katia, everything you model keeps track of the full history. I would take the input edge, I would find the midpoint, uh, some vertical line, define some planes. I would define a, a surface that I would split on the top and on the bottom and then that surface I would extrude into a panel. And then once I model this, I can literally use, uh, you can, I can wrap it with one step by using some uh, user defined feature, which we'll talk about next time. But let's say I just wrap it up as a template and uh, a template that has these particular inputs. Once I have done that, I, in this case, I made a variation of it, a template with an opening uh, and um, you will see how that is regulated. You see that here some lines have different colors. That is because when I uh, named them, when I drew them, I named them also. So and some of them are called CLT pure and some of them have has door in the name or has window in the name so that I can differ between them and I can also know to instantiate the template with an opening. But where do I get the opening from? You can do this in many, many different ways. Here's how I decided to do it just for test purposes, just to see if I do something, if it will be actually be parametrically connected to the full model. I went through all the lines with this small script and whenever the line had that has door or has window, uh, I created a small sketch. A sketch is basically a 2D space in, in, in Katia that you could put anywhere if you want to draw something in a 2D plane. I automatically created uh, 13, 14 sketches here, wherever there are openings. And what I did then, I didn't want to parametrically create openings. I actually went inside of this 14 and, f and I, I fastly drew a rectangle as an opening. That's all I did. That's why you see they're all randomly uh, sized. Because I wanted to see if I do that manually, if everything is still going to be interconnected. And it will be. So now I have this as an input, right? I have a lot of lines that should grow into CLT panels. And above some of the lines, I have some openings. So I have a, a script here. I do start the script and execute the script. And the script will go through all of these lines. And then it will do the following. It will, for every line that is called CLT pure, it will simply instantiate as a template. Now, Keep in mind, we have a very, very simple template here. It's just a box. Later on, you will see we will have so-called engineering templates that will generate everything until the smallest detail, including the connections and including the bill of quantities and so on. This is just the first step. For every line that is a salmon color that has um, in the name, it should have opening in the name. This is how I programmed it. This is specific to this case, it doesn't have to be like that. But in this case, it still instantiates the same UDF template, but as a bottom plane, it takes another plane from this level set here. And that's what I told you, it's beautiful that they're external. So check out what happens. You, you can see there are a couple of horizontal panels. There's one here, there's one here, there's one here, and so on. If I change this plane uh, to 1,500 millimeter height, you will see how they will all update automatically because they're all interconnected. And that's just the start of the whole parametric story. When I created these sketches, you remember I, sh I showed you that, that these walls are created in these 2D sketches. So for example, these uh, openings here, I noticed that in this specific case, they have some standard value. So I decided to export that to an external parameter. Where is that parameter? Well, here I have some uh, in this DNA of my structure. 
I have two parameters that I exported. One is the big opening width, which is exactly this length or width. And one is the CLT between big openings. So this is the, this CLT here. What I will do is I will change this length, this width. Here we go. Instead of 1725 milliliters, let's make it very small. Let's make it 725 milliliters, millimeters. Look at this. The whole thing got updated and now I have smaller openings wherever this opening of mine is. So let me return this to where it was, to 1725. I decided I don't like it how it is. And how about this? What if I want this to be smaller, not 1 meter 0.2? What about if I make it just 27.5 centimeters? Again, something weird, doesn't matter, but as you see, it updates in the entire model. So that is just a, a single small parameter that I connected to these things. Now, it's very interesting that, um, or it's very important that for this uh, particular example, I did not choose something that you are used to connect with the term parametrics. There is no freeform grid shell. It's a very specific, very simple, very basic CLT house that you would never dream of parametrizing. But for me, it was exactly interesting to see how one can parametrize even the most conventional uh, architecture. And uh, what's interesting here is, um, for example, let's go and find this little sketch of this opening. Remember this DNA is a tree structure, we can open, close stuff as we want. So this is this particular sketch, right, of this opening. So let's say I don't like this opening of mine. Now I'm not, I'm not isolating it this, I'm, I'm just doing it a bit widely here, or moving the opening around. But the point is that once I move it around here, see it's already updated and the template is updated as well and the opening is moved. Now uh, what you're seeing here is this uh, these problems here and the joints are not solved. I will address that at the end. It's, this is what we're going to solve in the second step. But I want to show you something else. The whole idea behind parametrizing this whole structure is that you can make very big basic changes. So what would be a very big basic change in our case? Well, one of them would be, of course, if you remember, we have our basic grid. And here is our basic grid. Remember these three by three, four lines. So theoretically, if I take this grid line and I enlarge this space and move this grid line here somewhere, the secondary grid structure will follow all the walls that are connected to the secondary grid structure will follow it. And then all the templates that are on those walls, we will reinstantiate. So let's see if that is what happens. So let's enter our grid structure and we will take this value of 2800, the value that which I can export and publish it, let's say to be an external parameter. So I can change it from, from here somewhere, but that's not important at this moment. Let's uh, change it to 7800. So this is what happens. The, our grid line changed, uh, moved here and this grid line stretched. So let's see once we get out of this sketch, what will happen. And as you can see, uh, exactly what we expected happened. This grid line moved, the secondary grid line moved, and the walls that are connected to the grid line, this grid line moved uh, as well. So that's uh, the beauty of it. And let's make some other changes on this grid. Let's uh, expand this one from 8,400 to 12,400, whatever. And then look at all these walls update simultaneously, you see? These are walls stretched. Now, how do you connect this to the grid? That's up to you. You know, for in my in my case, for example, these walls that uh, they started be, uh, being generated from here. So that means that the last one will be stretched. You could take this line and then divide them into equal elements and so on and so on. So how do you parameterize it? It's up to you. But what is important is that uh, in this chain, from the basic grid until the panel, at any moment you can intersect and change something and that will change. For example, you don't have to change something on the basic grid. Remember what we said? We said that uh, here is the basic grid and we have a small offset in the secondary grid. So why don't we go into the secondary grid and change this small offset from 200 to 2200? You see, it will move it here. So that means that these walls now that are on this line, they will, you see, they moved they are now 2,200 uh, millimeters away 
from the basic grid and the whole structure is kept the same. Now, one of the great things about this is uh, you will see in the future, I will explain how this can all work online, but you can easily divide work. So you can imagine uh, someone developing this complex uh, CLT template with all the connections as we will see in the future and the bill of quantities and so on, and someone working on the parameterization of the 2D grid. And then uh, the third person could develop the script of how, how this is all connected. And when I say the script, this is really, really not programming. So most of all is inbuilt in the software, so you don't have to program at all. When I say a script, that means really, really a uh, simple way of just instantiating the template. And then you can easily combine all those works into with a single click of a button and, and generate all the templates and update everything automatically. You, you have to keep in mind that, that that's also very, very convenient. Uh, once I go inside my template, this little guy here, and I change it, something and I update the template, the, uh, every, all the templates will be re-instantiated. So I can change something here, uh, change the parameters. By the way, this template has uh, different input parameters that I still haven't played with yet. And we will see that in the future. For example, uh, wall extension, how much, is, how much it extends toward the left or the right. Um, you see this panel flip, if it's true or not, that's what we want to, to control. The, the wall thickness, those are all parameters that we can play with once we instantiate the template, which I'm not doing yet. In the step after that, we will look then at these connections. What we will try to do is to recognize automatically where the CLT panels are connected and then build a complex connection around it. So what we will do is just add another thing in this chain uh, reaction of ours. So when we change the grid, the secondary grid changes, the uh, panels are re-instantiated, the connections are found again, the connections are re-instantiated and so on and so on. And we are well on our way on this journey to the fully, fully parametric model. Again, this is a very, very simple example of a CLT house. And what you will see in the future is uh, how this house grows to be a complete one and how it goes into the depths and how we develop specific details, steel columns here, connections between CLT panels, and we end up with generating full bill of quantities and what's very cool, full 2D drawings and CSC drawings for every CLT panel. And yes, I will repeat it for the 700th time. Once I change this grid, basic grid structure, everything in the chain reaction will change so that all those 2D drawings, all, uh, uh, all those bill of quantities tables are reinstantiated and automatically updated. Now, don't be deterred by the basic geometric level of this model. I know you have BIM flashing in front of your eyes. Soon we will see how to incorporate standard architectural elements like windows, doors, slabs, and define and export everything, including walls, according to the IFC data model. You have to keep in mind one important thing that you just witnessed. Parent, child, parent, child, parent, child. Everything that is an output becomes an input for something else. So these basic panels are just another input for the next level, maybe to a full wall with all layers. And as I said, connections. And the cool thing is that once instantiated this template, uh, this one CLT panel entity, once expanded in the tree structure, we can contain the 2D drawing, an Excel table, a bill of quantities, everything generated and updated automatically. So you can always go further, further and deeper along the DNA path, along this uh, structure. So we will uh, explore that as well. That's it for today, folks. I hope I got you interested. Subscribe and let us discover more and more tools that will enable us to create fully parametric digital twins. And once we do that, we will see how to employ smart algorithms to do most of the manual work for us so that we can concentrate only on high level design. Subscribe, share, stay free. Yeah.